So um, first of all, I would like to welcome each of you to the board training slash board meeting slash meet and greet. I am Angel Walker, your executive director, and I am super excited to have the opportunity to be a part of Major Russell Community Action Agency. And so as a part of the organizational standards, as we all know, all community action agencies are required to uh, use the services of a Roma certified trainer, and um, all of the boards um, have to have training on what their roles and responsibilities are um, every two years in order for us to be in compliance with those standards. And so as a nationally certified master Roma trainer, I have the pleasure of conducting the training on the four roles and responsibilities. So first, we're going to start with the promise of community action. So community action changes people's lives, embodies the spirit of hope, improves communities, and make America a better place to live. We care about the entire community, and we are dedicated to helping people help themselves and each other. So what is my role as a board member? So in this training, um, I'm going to go over um, all of the roles um, for you guys to be a board member, and then also we'll receive a brief introduction of what Roma is and actually how it came about. Um, we will also discuss the Roma cycle and how it affects all the aspects of the community action work that we do here at Megan Russell. And then also, it will include like some suggestions that you can take and consider as it relates to your role and responsibilities. So, let's dive right in. So every member of a nonprofit tripartite board has a fiduciary responsibility for the organization and also a duty of care, as you all may know. So the duty of loyalty is simply the standard of faithfulness. And then also board members have six key areas in which they play a major role in. And those six key areas are the mission, um, the agency's accountability, the agency's ability to conduct strategic planning, the performance of the agency, as well as engagement, and then also generating funds. So let's start off with the mission. So this is the current mission for what Making Russell Community Action Agency. And that mission statement is to reduce the harsh poverty generated through inflation, lack of preparation, education, and other training, loss of income, by providing people, healthy people attitude and offering a hand up, not a handout, for area citizens. And so, as we all know, the mission is the reason that the organization exists. And it is the most important statement that the organization makes. Having a clear mission statement that the board, the staff, and key stakeholders can come around helps the organization resist the temptation to expand into programs and services where it lacks appropriate skills and resources. Oftentimes we have agencies, sometimes we have uh, people come and say, hey, I'm going to give you this money, but if it doesn't match to what our mission and our vision is as an organization, then that is something that we're going to have to either say, hey, you know, we can partner with somebody else to do, or we can look into even changing our mission. So the next key element is planning. And so the Federal CSBG Act and the Federal CSBG organizational standards require that the board oversees two types of planning efforts. So the Community Action Plan, which is the CAP, I know everyone's heard of that, um, that informs um, the strategic plan, and it is also the agency-wide document that establishes the direction and the services and activities that we are going to provide to the citizens of under CSBG. So the organization is required to engage in strategic planning every five years, and the board is required to approve that plan. And so we have to kind of think of, when we think of strategic planning for um, the Community Services Block Grant, some of the process mindset is, you know, we have to think about the mission and the purpose. We have to make sure that the strategic plan aligns with the overall mission. We also need to periodically review our services and programs to make sure that they are relevant with the changing times. So sometimes we get into the mindset where it's what we've always done, but we have to make sure that we keep our community assessment up to date to make sure that whatever services and activities that we are providing is actually meeting the need 
of the citizens in Macon County and in Russell County. And then also we have to make sure we identify broad goals and priorities and establish and maintain procedures on reporting those goals and priorities. So engagement, um, the board, as you all well know, should be fully engaged um, in the organization. So once again, meeting the fiduciary duty of care, making sure that we're um, having well-informed and responsible decision. Um, also empowering the low-income community. So the board is like one of the biggest champions for community action. And then also collecting and providing input on the community needs. And then coming back to the agency where we can sit down and develop those strategies and partnerships and build those collaborations with the local community so we can make sure that we're fulfilling the needs and bridging the gap as well. Um, another key element is generating funds. So we have to make sure that the agency is fiscally sound. We understand that we receive um, federal money, but we have to make sure that we, you know, diversify our portfolio and get money from different funding sources, you know. Um, not only just federal, but state, local donations, things like that of that nature. So the board is actually responsible for the organization's survival and making sure that we have sufficient funds to operate and then also to make sure that we are in compliance with the rules and the organizational standards and then also um, the federal and state rules. So one of the most common ways to generate funds is by writing grants and preparing bid proposals. Um, organized fundraising is another one which includes capital campaigns, special events, um, solicitation of gifts, and um, requests from like foundations. And board members are key in helping to identify and meet those potential donors, speaking on behalf of the organization, going out in the community and sharing the mission and the vision of the agency, um, generating interest in the community, and also volunteering <coughs> for events. So as far as performance is concerned, the board actually oversees the program performance by once again reviewing the goals that it is set and then also having an annual review which includes assessments of the strategic plan, making sure that we are where we need to be as far as the five-year strategic plan is concerned and that should be done at every board meeting. So that is another responsibility of the board of the Community Action Agency. Accountability is another key responsibility. Um, the board has the responsibility to make sure that we are accountable, that um, we evaluate the evaluations on the legal side, the financial side, and the operational side. Um, we should be aware of the findings, like we talked about the Form 990. We just had Mr. Allen do the audit, and so that is a part of the financial accountability piece. Um, everyone should have received a copy of the Form 990. If not, then it is available. But that is another big finding that it talks about um, our payroll tax withholdings and our income tax. So that is something that is key. So that is available for you all as well. And so once again, one of the board's primary functions is to oversee the agency's finances to make sure that we are spending appropriately and to make sure that we are in compliance with all of the standards and the federal and state um, mandates. So another thing um, for the board to look at is the organizational standards. So I know we talk about that a lot. So actually, it has not been around for that very long. It's only been around since January 2016. That is when um, the Office of Community Services made that a part of the CSBG framework. Um, all of the Roma principles and practices are embedded in the organizational standards, and there are certain organizational standards um, that the board has to meet. Uh, one of them, once again, is making sure that we fully adopt the audit, making sure that the IR, um, that the Form 990 is available um, to everyone. So those are things that the board um, is responsible for as far as the organizational standards are concerned. So I know we talk about this thing called ROMA. So ROMA 
is basically a sound management practice that integrates outcomes and results into a community action agency's administration, management, operation, and evaluation of programs and services. So we're just gonna talk a few minutes about what Roma is. So Roma actually started um, October 1st of 2001. Roma stands for Results Oriented Management and Accountability. And Roma is basically the performance reporting that we are mandated as a community action agency to perform. So what is Roma? Roma focuses on outcomes rather than a particular program. It actually improves the services where we can actually utilize the Roma cycle and where we can see what is working well and what is not. It also helps us to organize and implement resources and activities to make sure that we achieve positive results. Sometimes when people hear Roma, they think of it as a report. It is not a report. It is a set of rules and you know procedures and things like that of that nature. It's really the way of thinking that community action does. So once again, Roma helps us to plan. It helps us to organize. It gives us direction. And then it also helps us evaluate. So when we talk about results, we have to make sure that we manage by results. So managing by results is a little different from when back in the day we used to count like how many food boxes we used to give away or how many energy assistance bills did we pay. But now we actually measure by success now. So basically instead of saying, it's just a way, it's a shift in the mindset. Instead of saying, oh, I gave away 500 food boxes, we can say, oh, I got 500 families to reduce food insecurity. Or instead of saying, oh, I paid 500 people's light bills, we can say, I helped 500 people to avoid being disconnected. So once again, it's just a shift in the way that we speak and a shift in the way of our mindset. So this is actually the new Community Action Network Theory of Change. So we used to have six goals as far as Roma is concerned, but we condensed it together, and so now we have three Roma goals. Um, this Theory of Change was actually adopted in August 2017. Every Community Action Agency is kind of asked or requested to take the basis of this theory of change and then make a local theory of change. So we will definitely be working together to create our own local theory of change um, as an agency. And so what basically the theory of change does, it provides a clear understanding of exactly what we do. That's what it does. Um, so as you see in the infographic, um, the services and strategies um, would be employment, education and cognitive development, income infrastructure and asset building, housing, health, social, behavior development, and civic engagement and community involvement. Those three national goals which will be adopted as an agency would be individuals and families with low incomes are stable and achieve economic security, communities where people with low incomes live are healthy and offer economic opportunity, and people with low incomes are engaged and active in building opportunities in their community. So as I spoke about the Roma Cycle, this is the Roma Cycle. Uh, this Roma Cycle was basically created to show all of the activities that are involved in results management and accountability. So with the assessment phase, you know, we do a community assessment break. So this is where we assess, once again, the needs of the community to see what resources are out there and then what resources are lacking and to see where we can come in as, as a community action agency to bridge that gap. Um, also with planning, um, the plan will list outcomes that are connected to the need and then that's where we conduct our services and strategies to see what the need is so then how are we going to fulfill the need. Also with the implementation phase, this is where we set the targets to make sure that we're meeting the needs. With the achievement of results, this is where we observe our results, monitor them, and report the results to the board, to the community at large, to our funding <coughs> sources, to everybody. And then last but not least, we always have to have an evaluation. 
So this is where we'll take our data, analyze the data, make sure that the services that we were providing was actually within the need, and then we can see is this working or is this not working. Okay, so I know when you look at the cycle, it's showing like a clockwise movement, but the phases can be at any time. So if we figure that something's not working, we go to the planning phase, we go to the evaluation phase, we go to implementation, it just all connects together. So once again, with the assessment phase, that is when we do the community assessment, we take the data to try to figure out exactly what needs there are and what type of services do we need to develop to address those needs. With that planning phase, we need to figure out what type of impact that we want to make in the community, what type of target um, performance targets that we have, and then also what types of services and initiatives do we provide. We never want to duplicate services either. So therefore, we have to make sure that we build meaningful partnerships in the community to where we can provide a holistic approach to leading our families towards self-sufficiency and economic security. When we look into the implementation phase, this is when we, once again, try to make sure that everything is connected together. We observe that process, and then we try to come back to the table to figure out do we need to make any type of changes to the services that we provide. And then with the achievement of results, this is coming with tracking those outcomes, making sure that our families are moving out of poverty, they are moving up the poverty um, guidelines, and um, to make sure that if they are not, then what do we need to do? What type of resources do we need to have in order to make sure that they are doing so? And then also, what other type of support do we need in the community? Because we know we cannot do all of this work by ourselves, and so making sure that we have those meaningful partnerships, that person that we can call on, to make sure that we can once again provide that whole family approach to our, for our families. And then once again, that evaluation phase. What changed? So I gave you a food box. I had your child enrolled in Head Start. We did rental assistance. We did energy assistance. We provided transportation routes. Okay, what happened? What is the outcome? What has changed? Okay, what was achieved? And then what can we do to improve? Everything is always about continuous improvement. And so in a nutshell, see my little nuts down there? <laughs> I like all nuts and pecans. So in a nutshell, um, the board's roles and responsibilities is to assist in establishing realistic results, to monitor and evaluate those results, to share the results and to gather public trust, so be a champion for the agency, to influence decision makers using these results, and then to also use the results to obtain resources. Mrs. Walker, how are you today? I am great, thank you for having me. You let me tell you, I was fortunate enough to sit in on the interview when you interviewed for executive director yes, sir. of the community action agency here in this town and then the other county that you work in. Now, I was totally impressed with your intelligence, your fitness to be put under that kind of interview pressure, you know, and your ability to articulate your hopes and your dreams and your background and put it all together and then articulate to us what you could do for our community here in Tuskegee and your other county. Now, tell me who you are. Well, I am Angel Walker. I am from Columbus, Georgia. I was born and raised there all of my life. I have actually been in community action for a little bit over 16 years. Um, community action is my passion. Um, I am super excited to be here, a part of making Russell Community Action Agency as the executive director. And I look forward to all of the strides that we are going to make and the partnerships and resources that we're going to build within the community. Um, community action to me is, is everything basically. Um, I, like I said, once again, I grew up um, being in community action with my grandfather volunteering for the church and doing the Meals on Wheels program and doing the feeding assistance program and then also volunteering um, with the elderly program. So this is something that is uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm actually a master Roma trainer and so therefore I 
am able to go out and speak to other community action agencies and be involved in other projects to further the mission of the network itself. So once again, I am super excited and very proud and very humble to have the opportunity to come to an agency such as this and in this wonderful community so I can further the mission of community action. Now, when that committee was asking you questions about your background and your qualifications, you knew and had everything that we thought we needed plus some. If a woman of your caliber would come to a little small country town like Tuskegee, and woman, you had me praying <laughs> that when you left here and thought about it and assessed it, you would say yes. And I want to congratulate you for saying yes, and I want to know why did you say yes? <laughs> I said yes because once again, like I said, community action is something that is near and dear to my heart. Um, it is basically God's work. That is exactly what it is. And coming into smaller communities where they may not have the knowledge and the expertise is something that I've always strived to be, to do and to have an opportunity to, to do. Um, this is part of the reason why I've gone to school and part of the reason why I've gone and get certifications in different things. So I'm able to go to different communities and share the knowledge that I have to build up communities and to build the citizens of, um, um, of our low income individuals, especially in our rural counties. Oftentimes our low income individuals in rural counties feel like they do not have a voice. They may not have the knowledge or the education or the resources um, as some of the um, individuals in bigger counties or metropolitan areas. So this would be my opportunity to bring the information that I have, to bring the partners on a national level, a local level, and also on a state level, to come down here to this community and work with not only um, the nonprofit sector, but with also the government sector and also the for-profit sector to see how we can move our families throughout a um, holistic approach um, to leading our families to economic stability and self-sufficiency. Now, this is my introduction of you to our community. What do you need to say to our community to make them aware of what you need from them in order to be successful in your endeavor? In order for me to be successful in my endeavor in this community, I would need support um, from the local churches, from the nonprofits, the for profits, um, even from the citizens themselves, um, resources and partnerships um, so we can make sure that we build a community in which community action thrives. Uh, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And more speed to you. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Whitehead, how are you today? I am wonderful. You know, we were running around with, like chickens with our heads cut off, trying to find us a physical officer who was qualified and willing to t come to Tuskegee. And here you are. Thank you so very much. Tell me something about your background. Well, I have 35 plus years of experience um, in, not in um, for-profit and non-profit. Um, the, the job I left recently is a, a larger community action and has Head Start and Early Head Start. And I love my job there, really loved it. And, but with that growth, I needed a change. I needed to be able to have my heart where it needed to be. So with a step of faith, a leap of faith, I walked out and left that job. And then I called Angel, whom I had worked with for five plus years. And it just so happened she needed a finance person. You know, and it comes a time in our lives that we may even love a job, but it just come a time that you need to move on for your own good, isn't it? Yes, there is, and, and that's And it I takes was. a lot of guts and, or, and gall and audacity, though, to make that move. Yes, it does. Yeah. I agree. Okay, so what uh, job will you be performing here in the community action? I will be the CFO, the Chief Fiscal Officer of Macon Russell, 
You keep up with the money then, right? I keep up with every penny. <laughs> All right, very good. Go ahead. And, and yes, I count every penny. I try and make sure it all balances out. Everything is charged out correctly. Reports are given when they need to be given. Um, if anybody needs anything, they ask for something, they need information, I give that to them when they need it. Um, I work very closely with our executive director, Angel, Angel Walker, um, and we will work together to, to help to grow Macon Russell. Very and make good. it a better, bigger, better agency than it already is. I mean, it's a wonderful agency now, but there's always possibilities. Very good, and welcome to Little Country Tuskegee. Well, thank you. <laughs> I look forward to being here.